we have seen the polynomial interpolation will yield an infinitely differentiable continuous time interpolation of a finite set of data points. And we have introduced Lagrange polynomials as a very convenient way to find this interpolation polynomial. Remember, the Lagrange polynomial were defined by this formula, which is dependent on the length of the interpolation interval, in this case, 2 capital N plus 1 points. And we have seen these polynomials, we have plotted them, they look like so. In this case, N is equal to 2, so we have polynomials of degree 4. With Lagrange interpolation, the continuous time interpolation is defined by this formula, which is a linear combination of functions here that depend in highly nonlinear ways both on the length of the interpolation interval and on the index of the interpolation point. By contrast, if you use a local or kernel-based interpolation scheme, we have that the interpolated signal is still a linear combination of functions, but these functions are just shifted copies of the same prototype function here. So with polynomial interpolation, the advantage is that we have a maximally smooth uh, interpolation, but the drawback is that the interpolation kernel depend on the length of the interpolation interval. Conversely, with local interpolation, we have the same interpolation kernel independently of the length of the data set, but the problem is that we have a lack of smoothness. Now here is probably the most remarkable result that you will see in this class. As the number of points in the data set that we need to interpolate grows to infinity, all the Lagrange interpolation polynomials end up converging to shifts of the same function. So as big N goes to infinity, all Lagrange polynomials end up having the same shape and they're just shifted versions of the same function. And this function is actually the sink function. This result tells us that we can keep the kernel-based interpolation approach and yet achieve a maximally smooth interpolator. The drawback is that, as we know, the sink is a two-sided infinite support function. It's the output of an ideal system that we cannot realize in practice. However, it tells us that we have an optimal result that we can try to approximate as well as we can afford. The famous sink interpolation formula, therefore, is the following is a mixed domain convolution, once again. Here we state the formula for an arbitrary interpolation interval Ts, and it is a linear combination of shifted and scaled versions of the sync function weighed by the discrete time samples. In practice, here is a portion of our data set. We place a sync function at each discrete time point, and you see that the sync function naturally fulfills the interpolation property, namely it's equal to 1 in 0, and it's equal to 0 at all other multiples of the interpolation interval. And when we sum all the sync functions together, we obtain a maximally smooth interpolator for our data points. Of course, to be thorough, we should formally prove the convergence of the Lagrange polynomials to the sync function. This is unfortunately a bit technical, and so the full proof is in the book. One very non-rigorous way to develop a mathematical intuition as to why this is plausible is the fact that sync of t minus n and the infinite degree Lagrange polynomial share an infinite number of zeros because they're both equal to zero for all integer values of the argument. Since polynomials that share the same zeros are identical, by some sort of a hand wavy extrapolation, we can say the sink and the infinite degree Lagrange polynomials are the same. We can also be very pragmatic and look at the convergence from the numerical point of view. So we take the definition of the arbitrary uh, Lagrange polynomial of order n. Let's take the Lagrange polynomial uh, number zero. And if we manipulate the definition, it's very easy to obtain uh, this representation is a product for k that goes from 1 to capital N of 1 minus t square over k square. Now, this is very easy to compute, and so we can plot this function against the sync function. So here's the sync function with time base ts equal to 1, and here we plot the Lagrange polynomial of order 100, which, uh, remember, is a polynomial of degree 200. As we increase the degree of the polynomial, we can see that the convergence to the sync function gets better and better. 